welcome to my channel, Haley Marie Vintage. Today I'm super excited. I'm showing you all the different things I picked up in Korea. For this, we have a bunch of different categories. I'm going to start with food, go to home goods, beauty and skincare, fashion, and then last but not least, I went to a six story craft wholesale mall. So I have a lot of goodies to show you that I picked up there. So that's kind of the order of things. That's kind of what we're doing. But anyway, like I said, we're going to start with food. All right, I am sharing my chair with a whole lot of different things. First, I have a whole bunch of gummy candies. I was constantly picking up gummy candies and eating them there. Uh, I really like this Jellylicious brand. I have a couple. This one is like orange, peach, and grape flavored. This one is like, I think, a bunch of different grapes or berry flavored. And it's this one's my favorite, I think. And then they also have these little like fruit snack candies that have like, they look like they're shaped like dog bones and they're kind of sour. They're really, really good. I really like the texture of Korean gummy candy. It has a certain like bounciness to it that I feel like the US doesn't. However, I also get a lot of stale candy in the US, so it might just be that these are fairly fresh. Another thing I got is a bunch of these cheese crackers. I didn't plan on bringing these in. I bought them at a convenience store and I didn't realize there were like a bunch of individually wrapped packages. I thought it was just like one big package. These are good. They taste pretty much like cheese Ritz. There's not really a huge difference. And then as far as candy goes, I went to a couple places. I went to, I think it's called Weenie Beanie inside of Lottie World. And I got a bunch of individually wrapped candies. These are to keep on my desk at work. I keep candy on my desk at work. So I thought these are perfect for that. They're really cute. Similarly, we went to Beetlebutt which is like a homemade candy store. This is super cute. It's like this little glass jar and I have eaten a few and they're really good. If you are in South Korea, I highly recommend stopping by Beetlebug. Lee, I have another bunch of individually wrapped candies. I haven't tried these yet. Uh, it looks like they're apple and grape. And these ones will also be something I have on my desk at work. And then I brought back for some of my coworkers. I don't know what these are. I think they're like mochi chocolate things. They kind of reminded me of the fish red bean pastries that we had as street food there. And so that's kind of why I picked them up. I have no idea what they taste like yet. Where I got all these little pineapple Oreo things. Uh, again, I haven't tried these, so I don't know how they are. They're also for work. But yeah, that's kind of what I got, what I'm excited about. Snacks are something I bring back for a lot of people just because they're like an easy thing to give people a couple different snacks. I can just pick them up at the grocery store in bulk. So that's it for food. So next we're gonna move on to home goods. So I got a bunch of really cute masks. These ones have like flowers and then I have blue and green marble ones. I thought they just had some really cute masks in Korea and I think they fit better and just like breathe better than American masks. You can actually get these online. They're a lot more expensive than they were in Korea. Like they're almost $10 more per pack. But I will link the shop that this is down below. It's called Mask Lab. And with them, I also got these really cute mask chains. I pretty much wear a mask anytime I'm indoors somewhere. So it's just nice to have a mask chain, especially for work where when I'm sitting at my desk drinking a cup of coffee, I might not have my mask on. And then I have to like set it somewhere and remember where I set it. So I'm really excited about these two mask chains. They're both just like multicolored, cute little things. And yeah, I was really excited in Korea that I had some options to actually get some cute things for masking. I also got some utensils. Hold up, let me get them out. I got some chopsticks. These I got at a souvenir shop in the subway. They're just some wooden chopsticks. They're cute. I like the little case that they're in. I'll probably carry these in my purse. I use chopsticks a lot when I'm out and about and eating. And then I got this little spoon. Why? I don't quite know. So it's just like a long spoon. I figure I can like stir tea with it or use it when I need to get into like longer jars with stuff that is thinner. I got this on Nami Island. Nami Island had kind of some cool like craftsman stores and so I picked this up there. Also I went to Daiso and I just got this cute spray bottle for my plants. It has little flamingos and cactuses on it. Nothing too like special or anything. I thought it was cute. Honestly I probably could pick this up in an American Daiso but here we are. I also got a couple stationary pieces. They're both checklist things. I use checklists a lot just to remember what I'm doing day to day. I picked up this one is from the Soul Tower. Actually, this one's also from the Soul Tower, but it just has little dinosaurs on it that I thought were really cute. So I'll use these a ton. I'm, like I said, a huge checklist person. I rely on checklists like every single day. I am a checklist person or I don't know what I'm doing. I also got one toy for Spooky while I was there. I would say this is like not the safest cat toy, so it will live in the closet when I am not actually playing with it with her just because I feel like all these like little plastic pieces are maybe not the safest but it's so cute and she absolutely loves it I've played with her with it already and I also got a matching one for my friend's cats and we've played with their cats with it and their cats absolutely adore this toy so I actually think I'm gonna try to make a toy like it that is safe but Spooky absolutely adores
enjoys it. In fact, she's looking at me like a crazy cat right now. She really likes like, it like flaps. Like I think this just mimics a bird better than a lot of the other toys I have that are supposed to mimic birds. She loves this toy. I think it's her new favorite. And yeah, she is currently staring me down to play with it. So going into some more kind of unique things I got, I got this little sake or soju set. I really like soju, so I'm most likely going to use it for soju. It's just this glass and then it comes with these little cups that also have these little tiny cats in it. I think this was around like $35 or something like that. And another piece of pottery I picked up was this. When I went on the vintage tour, we stopped in this really beautiful pottery store. It had a lot of really lovely pieces of pottery, some that were really, really old. This one's not so old. This one's only like 10 to 13 years. However, it was important to me to pick up a piece of Korean style pottery. There was a lot of Japanese and Chinese in the store, I but I was in Korea. I specifically wanted Korean and I love this little bud base. It's very like, it has a really great weight and balance to it. It's signed by its potter and it has this really, really beautiful beautiful flower and then it also has like a speckle kind of to the glaze it's just it's a beautiful piece so yeah I absolutely adore this piece and I'm so glad it was Korean she also had a couple Korean pieces that were like hundreds of years old I could not afford those and then last up that I also got on that tour are these I don't know if they're vintage I don't know if they're antique I don't know if they're still sold in the stores Jesus spooky you scared me spooky hey yeah the, what these are is these are rice cake stampers so you would use them to decorate your rice cakes i picked them up for my pottery group i think this would be a really nice thing to stamp onto like really spooky spooky got all riled because i got that toy out i just think they're absolutely cute and i have no idea how old these were i do know these were about five dollars each all right, next up is beauty and skincare. So I'm gonna go grab those things. First, starting with this hairbrush. I think this was about $12. It's just a cute wet style like hairbrush. I just loved it because of its rainbow bristles. I thought it was so cute. I got some different face masks. Ooh, excuse me. <laughs> this one's mugwort. I got 25 of these. I gave some to friends. I kept, I think four for myself. And then this is a brightening mask sheet. This just came free with another purchase that I'll show you in a second. I also got like a bunch of these single use hand sanitizers, which I'll leave probably in my car or in my purse or whatever. Those are also free gifts. I didn't buy those. And then now we kind of have a bunch of random stuff. So I got some skincare. I got something by the brand Mamonde. And I got their blue chamomile skincare and their probiotic skincare. I'm not sure how either of these are gonna work for me. I got these mini sides came automatically with a bigger size that I got for some friends. So that is kind of how I ended up with these and I'll use the mini to try them out for myself. And I guess if I love them, I will try to hunt them down in the US. At the garden shop, which was in the Garden of the Morning Calm gift shop. I don't know why that was such a tongue tire, but it was. I picked up this green tea scented hand cream. I love green tea as a scent. It's very energizing and uplifting for me. So once I smelled this cream, I knew I had to have it. They had people going around trying and like giving you samples and they got me uh, with this little hand cream here. I think that was about like $6. I don't remember how much this toothpaste was, but I was intrigued. Flavor is Mystic Forest. Tasty Voyage Mystic Forest toothpaste by Rusapello. I think you can get this in the US. It says it tastes like underwater green forest into blue paradise and will transport you to the Greek islands. I have used this toothpaste. I would call this flavor mint, but I was very intrigued and the packaging is really, really stinking cute. I got definitely suckered by the packaging of this. Similarly, I picked up this hair oil. I do really like this. It's lavender and patchouli scented. I got this for about $15. I use hair oils a lot because uh, my hair needs a little bit of help oiling itself again. Uh, it's a little dry, it's a little crusty. And I absolutely, patchouli is one of my top like scent notes. So I absolutely love this and I enjoy using it in my hair. All of these products, if I can find them, I will link them down below if you're curious to try them. This one has worked really well for my hair. This is the only one that I have tried consistently and really liked since I got it. And then other products that I already know I really like, they're the Peri Para Ink Velvets. I got the shade eight and 16. I already own, I think four other shades of this. I picked these up in Korea cause they're about $2 cheaper. They're about eight bucks. As opposed to in the United States, they're about like nine to $10. Highly recommend this brand. I don't like most European or American lip products cause I find them really heavy and drying for my lips. So I've been using a lot of different Asian beauty brands for a really long time. I also like how they stain and stuff like that. I'm wearing another Peri Para lip product that I picked up in Korea. I am having such a hard time with words today on my lips today and most of the time if I am wearing a lip product it is by this brand. The other ones that I got by this brand are I got their matte 
You'll let the color that I'm wearing right now is number 15 of their matte line. And then I also picked up number 12, which is a little bit more pinky. Yeah, these just, these work great for me. If you have really dry lips, they're worth a try. They do not dry my lips out more. And I can't really feel these on my lips. I hate, like I feel like most matte lipsticks that are from like American brands are really, really, really heavy on the lips. And American brands have started to make more tints and oils and stuff that I do enjoy. But they originally came from Asian skincare brands. So I can tell you the originals for did it better in my opinion and we may as well support the original people of those ideas so I absolutely adore those lip products and then the last lip product I got I got a style not a lip tint this one the color is double win it's just like a nice darker lip color especially with the peripera lip products I've been using them for years I absolutely love them and they're my go-to brand for lip products I also got it's so cute this little rainbow tube and then you have to click the top it pops out the bottom this is just a basic lip balm honestly but I fell in love with the packaging I think it was $12 which is crazy expensive for a lip balm. It's, I think, by You Need Me Cosmetics. Packaging is what really got me, and I'm definitely gonna be carrying this around in my purse to be fancy. I also got a couple glitters while in Korea and actually in Thailand, I noticed a lot of the like younger women were not wearing very much makeup, but they would have like these shimmers on their eyes that were absolutely beautiful. So once I found what they were, I went and I picked a few up. This one's a pretty pink flavor, flavored colored one I spang glitter by holika holika this one actually is not my favorite because the applicator is like this weird like brush tip applicator the other ones are doe foot and they work much better so let's talk about those these are from the brand colorgram I think and this is shade one and this is whoa shade two I think I'm wearing shade two on my eyelids today I don't know if you can even see it from that far away but I absolutely adore these glitters they're easy to put on easy to take off kind of a mindless product for me. So yeah, I picked up these two colors and I really have been enjoying them. I've worn both of them a bunch. And that is it for beauty. So now we will talk about fashion. Yes, I know these are a lot of different categories. I actually didn't buy that much clothing in Korea because I kind of felt clothing out after the wholesale ma mall in Thailand, but I did get some earrings. I will obviously be popping these up in pictures. You can't see these from as far away as you are, but I got these, they're really cute, like waterfall-y flowers. Oh no, I just threw one. I got some really, really tiny little flowers to put in. I have a lot of holes in my ear. I got these ones, which remind me of vintage, I think it's Alexandrite pieces because they're kind of a color shifting stone. These are obviously definitely very fake gems. I think each of these 15 to $20 a pair. And then the last ones I got are, they're like just this little curve shape that I've kind of seen all over Instagram and really enjoyed. And these are, I think, buy three, get one free. So that's why I have four pairs here and they're really, really cute and I'm excited to finally wear them. They are not like the highest quality or anything crazy. They came from one of those stores. I have one in my travel vlog where there's just like walls and walls of cards of jewelry and it's like really overwhelming and hard to choose from. I clearly not that hard given I figured out how to choose them. I also got some winter gear there. Seattle just doesn't have a cute fashion scene. So I, a lot of times like for weather things, pick up things in other countries. Thailand, I picked up obviously some of the summery stuff and then in winter in Korea I picked up some winter stuff they had these really cute little deer gloves and I also picked up these earmuffs which I absolutely adore so I love a wrap around the back of your head earmuff so you can kind of only see the earmuffs from up front I think they're absolutely cute these appear in a lot of my photos from Korea because I was wearing them almost constantly I love these 10 out of 10 and I love how like big and pink they are I just think they're a lot of fun socks I also got a bunch of socks while I was there it, it was about eight dollars for seven pairs and they were cute fashion socks so I'll kind of give you a little look at what these socks look like these ones have little cats and flowers on them and then I got these I actually got these in two colors they're kind of like they look like they have little berries or flowers on them and they're kind of argyly I thought these would be actually like cute sticking out of shoes and I got them in two colors and then I got these cute little floral socks and then I got some basic socks I got some longer purple socks some shorter pinker socks and then I got these fun fruit socks. Nothing like too wild here. I just, I do love a fashion sock. Still, like I said, I'm very much in a claw clip phase. I got this like furry blue one. Spooky really likes this one, which actually worries me because that means it might be real fur and that's not usually my vibe, but it's too late now. It is very pretty. And then this one is just like a cute little rainbow one. Just the type of thing I am a sucker for. Blast of the fashion. This was my big vintage buy. I went to a bunch of different vintage shops in Korea. Actually, it was interesting. Their vintage is definitely 
I would say like almost more Seattle vintage where it's more like workwear, sweaters, flannels. This is not a Seattle thing, uh, although I wish it was, but uh, also like racing jackets. They had a ton of vintage racing jackets. I really wanted to get one, but they range like 150 to $400. Of course, the one I really liked was like 300 ish. I don't think I would wear it enough to justify spending that, but they were really, really cute and I was very tempted. But this is the sweater I left the store with. This was $72 ish. It's a very cute like 80s grandpa sweater I feel or I guess grandma sweater and man it does smell like grandma I'm gonna wash this guy I just loved this I loved the like candy colors of it I feel like I see sweaters like this a lot that aren't my colors so I was really excited that this was my color so that's it on fashion now for the big finale I guess I'm gonna show you all of the different sewing things I got which was a little bit out of control because so many options I'm so pleased with what I brought back though I have some really cool projects that I'm sure I will complete with these so let's get into it you can start with something kind of boring you won't really be able to see this that well and I'm not really gonna do a close-up But it's basically a really fine cording that will work really well for gunny sacks I've been using some cheap stuff from Joann's. That I don't super love these I will be popping a photo I guess maybe I should sit more this way so I can put up a photo. So I found first these really gorgeous chains. I have a little purple one and then like a mermaidy shell one and then a hearts one that I'm gonna make some different jewelry pieces out of that are super girly. And then I got some little charms to add to it. It looks like they have an Instagram, which is interesting. They had really cute charms at this shop. I might do a video showing you me making these. I think I wanna make like a cute, one of those like drapey chokers, but with like mermaid meets theme. Let me know if you'd be interested in a jewelry making video for me. It would be a little different from this channel. And then I got, there are a bunch of booths with already crocheted things that then you could put together for like keychains and stuff. So what I got at one of these actually, I've been looking at a bunch of these online. I have a dress that has a bunch of crochet flowers on it, but it has a few stains on it. And I was going to crochet some flowers to stick on it, but I could just buy these pre-made. So I did. So that's what these are for. And then I got a bunch of different buttons. I'll show you a close up picture of these. I have some like nice black with silver details and then a couple like nicely pink detailed ones and then some like kind of rosy shank buttons. I'm a sucker for buttons as you know. And then trims. It was really hard to control myself with trims. If you saw the footage of that mall it was just like booths and booths and booths. Each booth had like hundreds of trims. It was very hard to choose what I wanted there. So first we'll start with I got these little they're like bow mesh things. I got them because I'm thinking of making like a blouse with these like on the side or something. I got three of them. Now that I've done inset lace, I feel a lot more confident on my ability to do things like this. So I picked these up with that kind of in mind. Supply wise, because it was a wholesale market, was pretty low in cost. I think the most I paid for a trim was like, which I'll just show you the trim that I paid the most for. I think I paid about $6 a yard for this trim here. And that's because it is beaded and rhinestoned. I mean, it has a lot of really beautiful texture. It's this really beautiful black flower trim. I got, I think five yards of it or something like that. It was really hard to rein myself in, especially cause trims, I could fit like a gajillion in my suitcase. I also got, I got a couple, what I would call like, threading trims where they'll look nice on their own but I could easily thread a ribbon through them for like a little extra detail. I kind of have dreams of a gunny sacks that's all white except for the decoration that I put on it with this that I could thread like a navy or a sapphire blue ribbon through. So I kind of picked some lace with that in mind. So I picked up this lace here and then there's some lace here. With that design in mind uh, this one would actually be a much like more intense in and out weave. Like I could actually set different lengths and stuff. So I thought it was interesting for that. And then I got, I got this adorable, I wanted it in black, but I could only find it in white. It's like this little bow trim. I love bows. If you've been on this channel, you know I love bows. I mean, I'm just, I'm very, very, very hyper feminine in the way I dress and I felt like this was perfect for that. And since I couldn't have the black bow trim of my dreams, I got this really cute flower black trim. And then this one is just like a nice refined crochet trim. I really enjoyed a lot of these booths. They were like cotton crochet trims. And then this one here I love. Uh, obviously you'll see close up photos of all of these, but this one here I particularly love because it's kind of graphic in nature. This was another one that I would have really liked in black because of the way it will be graphic. So this will have to go on like a darker fabric. And then this guy here is some gorgeous lace I got for, since I learned how to do the, uh, where it's like the actual break in the fabric and the lace is sheer. This I think would be lace that would be absolutely gorgeous for something like that. And then the last lace, 
this was right on par with the black one with the beading because this one also I don't know if you can tell it has some shimmer to it that's not going to pick up actually on the when I take the photos of these you aren't going to be able to tell that it's sequined because they're these really nice sheer subtle like I just I like the subtle sparkliness to this and I like the color I actually have some other pink laces that this would pair well with I think one of my I think rules after this trip is if I can put lace on a garment I have to because I have so many trims at this point it is a little bit absurd that's it for trims we're actually about to wrap up here we have just my fabrics first fabric I have I have this really beautiful light pink daisy this fabric and the next two fabrics I'm going to show you were about $3.40 a yard, so super cheap, like $3.40. I had to really, really hold back on fabric because fabric's pretty bulky to carry. And I have committed this year to as much fabric that I bring in has to also leave my stash. As a result, I'm trying to be a little bit pickier with fabric. I should also probably make that rule with trim, but let's be honest, I'm not going to be able to do both. These are really nice quality prints and they're technically for home decor but they're lightweight enough that I think they'll make nice dresses. A lot of their prints at this booth actually reminded me of either like 60s or 40s floral prints and these definitely apply so I got this light pink one. I think I got about five yards of each of these and then I got this. It's like this beautiful blue but there's like a really nice pop of purple in here that I absolutely adore and then I got this one which I love this print. It's like a coffee cafe print it is definitely a little bit more of an upholstery heavier fabric but I have a couple dress patterns that actually really work with something of this weight and it's like much more like house dressy which this would be the type of fabric that would be I don't know an appropriate pattern for house dress and I just think the printing on this is really high quality it's really really vibrant and nice in the way it's printed and then the last one I'm so excited about this fabric this was seven ish dollars a yard and it's so cute so it's this really gorgeous like I don't know how to explain it's like a shirting I guess um, and it has cherries and carrots woven in it as well as these beautiful blue stripes and I absolutely adored this fabric I think I want to make like a little top and skirt set with it that look like a dress when they're together but can be broken up in separates and worn with other pieces I just think this fabric is so cute but that wraps up this haul it was a bit insane thank you for chugging along here with me all my different categories of things I bought Korea was so fun you should check out those videos of my actual vlogs I learned a lot I experienced a lot and I obviously bought a lot um, honestly actually all things considered I feel like I was pretty good about what I bought and pretty thoughtful um, definitely a few years ago I would have brought back a lot more than this and everything I brought back I have uses for um, I am just starting to recover from jet lag. I've been back like four full days, but I came back with a cold and I also had some not so good news in my personal life. So I just like came back and felt like I got hit by a truck and I'm just starting to recover. I actually had planned on sewing a ton and I haven't been able to sew since I've been back, but that is changing this evening. I'm going to get to it. Subscribe and stick around. I am resuming to a completely normal schedule and content next week. Next week is another sewing video for y'all. Definitely subscribe and stick around for that. I would love to have you and I will see you next time. Bye.